The halls of the Park Slope Armory echo with the sounds of children. Here at the Armory's new YMCA space, they learn to paint and dance, do karate and yoga. Adults circle the track of the gymnasium, which was once a drill floor. One step through the door on 15th Street, and visitors enter a different world. But it wasn't always like this. The Park Slope Armory was built in 1895, designed by William A. Mundell for the 14th Regiment of the National Guard, also known as the Brooklyn Chasseur. The regiment was founded in 1847 and has origins dating back to colonial times. Well, the 14th Regiment um, really achieved great honor and acclaim during the Civil War, but that was before they were in this armory. Uh, the first uh, war in which they participated after moving in to the Park Slope Armory, 1898, they were mobilized by the federal government, but they didn't actually see any combat during the Spanish-American War. Uh, they did, however, see combat abroad in Europe during World War I. Uh, when they were in Europe in 1918 and then as part of the occupying force in 1919, so that they proudly were able to participate in New York's great 1919 Victory Parade on Broadway. Then they also participated in World War II. Uh, and after World War II, the 14th Regiment was reorganized, but if you follow the line uh, of you know, the groups that occupied the Park Slope Armory, they also participated in the Korean War, the Vietnam War, all the way up to Operation Desert Storm. The Park Slope Armory served as a recruitment center for the National Guard, who hosted events in which they recruited young men from the neighborhood. It was also constructed in part to allay the growing concerns of Brooklyn's elites, who following the Civil War draft riots in 1863, feared civil unrest, strikes, and disturbances that were beyond the capabilities of the police to control. This armory, like so many others in New York, was designed in a sort of very much like a medieval fortress. Uh, it was meant to look a big, powerful, impregnable, uh, as though anybody who wanted to attack this armory was going to be repelled. Now, that was mainly for show. Uh, they never expected that anybody was going to attack these armories, but it became the style of armories. The other feature of these armories is that they're designed very much like the train stations of their era. Uh, in the front is an administration building, which is kind of like the, the railroad station head house. It contained all kinds of rooms, uh, officers' rooms, and then behind it, appended to it, as though it were the train shed is the big, in this case, 70,000 square feet, a massive uh, drill hall. The Doughboy statue in front of the armory, a bronze statue of an anonymous soldier, was done by a sculptor named Anton Scaff, and it was dedicated in 1923. Uh, what's interesting about it uh, is that World War I was the first war that we commemorated uh, not with statues of heroes, not with allegorical groups, but with statues of anonymous soldiers, ordinary soldiers, in this case called doughboys. And these statues were placed uh, throughout the working class neighborhoods of New York. Due to the sheer size of the armory, it also came to play another role as an athletic facility. A lot of baseball was played in the armories. Uh, National Guard units used to play each other in the armories. Other amateur and semi-pro leagues would play in the armories. But in 1939, an indoor professional baseball league with some big names and real money behind it was formed to play a 102 game indoor season. There were teams in eight cities, and one of those cities was Brooklyn, and the Brooklyn team's home field was the 14th Regiment Armory. Despite the armory's importance to the neighborhood, over time, its relevance waned. After World War II, when there were all kinds of changes in American society and in sort of the social geography of the nation as a whole, particularly inner cities, uh, the Army and the National Guard went through a massive reorganization. 
uh, where it was determined that all of these inner city armories were really not needed any longer. They were inefficient facilities. In order to mobilize troops quickly, you wanted to be, you know, near the new transportation corridors that were forming after World War II. Those weren't in Park Slope, Brooklyn. It took a while, uh, but ultimately, um, all of the units were moved out of these armories, which left these massive buildings awaiting adaptive reuse. For the Park Slope Armory, adaptive reuse meant various groups renting space for different purposes, often for sporting events. In the 1990s, many of the city's armories were turned into homeless shelters. At this time, the Park Slope Armory built a 70-bed women's shelter and a section for veterans. Still, the community saw the potential for more. With funding from the city and the Department of Homeless Services, the Park Slope Armory YMCA opened its doors in 2010. The Y has a rich history of family programs. The idea of launching a program specifically for families to help mind, body, spirit, where they really start uh, pre-birth from prenatal all the way up. So there'd be things for you to do with your babies and things for you to do with your grandparents. Do you see stethoscopes anywhere on them? Yeah. Yeah, so stethoscopes. Mm -hmm. Prospect Park YMC, New Americans Welcome Center was started in response to the immense need of uh, instructional, recreational, and family support services. We have a very diverse group of uh, students in our program, and uh, it's uh, heartwarming to see how they are building a community of their own within the program when they are communicating with each other in English. What's really interesting about this architecture is that we've been able to put it to use. So those gun cases are the original gun cases that were here. And if you open them up and look on the inside, it actually has on the inside of every one of those a label that has the number of bayonets and the number of rifles that were housed there. So you can look at that and you know the history. There were guns in there. And now those spaces are filled with our children's artwork. And where that drill floor was used for war drills, there are now children doing basketball drills here. Um, so it's pretty amazing how the space has shifted from a place that was, uh, at that time, um, using it to protect the community to now it's a, a center for all of the community.